Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Food for Thought for Friday, March the 5th, 2021. Well, I'm really glad that you could join me today for devotions, and um, we're going to be continuing in the parables of Jesus Christ. And today, I'm going to be talking to you about the parable of the leaven. So, we're going to be looking at it in uh, Luke. There is also a passage in Matthew that speaks of this parable. But the one I'm focusing on today is found in Luke chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. Again, he asked, What shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all the way through the dough. So the emphasis is on a small thing being mixed into a very large batch. A woman baking bread normally wouldn't make 60 pounds of dough for her bread unless it was some large operation. Well, it's been said that um, the problem with a little sin is that it doesn't stay little. It may start out little, but like yeast mixed in with bread dough, the yeast spreads throughout the dough, causing the whole batch to rise. Now, this was and is the most common analogy used to compare uh, yeast mixing with dough. The use of yeast as an analogy often has a negative connotation to it because it's been compared with the corruption of sin. Um, This has been carried into the interpretation of this parable by some people who read it, suggesting that Jesus might be comparing the spread of yeast through the dough um, with the corruption of the church throughout the ages. Now, it's been true that there has been corrupting influence and elements um, that have affected the church since the time of the first century, but I personally don't believe that this interpretation is correct in what Jesus was trying to say. Jesus had a way of teaching people lessons about things by using practical illustrations um, from the natural world and applying them to the supernatural world. But uh, just because a symbol is used in a certain way in one place doesn't mean that same symbol cannot be used a completely different way in another. For example, we see birds being used as illustrations. Now, some people say that birds represent evil spirits or evil influences. They're often used to depict Satan and evil spirits. Um, stealing the seed of God's word from hearts and corrupting and and making something unclean. Uh, Yet a bird has also been interpreted in the Bible as depicting a good thing. Um, Consider, for instance, Elijah being fed by the ravens when he was escaping um, and hiding from Jezebel. God sent ravens to feed Elijah. There's other examples where birds are used, you know, like in the case of Noah's Ark, where they're sent out to uh, to see if there's dry land as a as a messenger of hope, or even used as a dove in the case of the Holy Spirit uh, lightning on Jesus. Um, So, just because uh, yeast has been used to describe how sin works its way into a group of people and corrupts them. Um, it is the effect, actually, of yeast that is being used in the comparison. Um, it spreads without being obvious. Well, such is the case in the kingdom of God. You can also parallel yeast with having a good effect. Um, you know, you have unleavened bread, which is good, but you can have leavened bread, which is good as well. And I believe this particular parable references the way that the kingdom of God spreads throughout the world and affects it like a small bit of yeast. The seed of the kingdom of God started very small, but like the mustard uh, seed parable, it grew into a large tree. A small bit of yeast does not look like very much in comparison with the sea of humanity which is compared to a very large batch of dough. But there is a miracle in the nature of the yeast. Uh, Yeast isn't just a bunch of chemical compounds 
put together. It's actually a microbial organism that grows. When you add yeast to bread dough, the life that is in the yeast interacts with the dough around it and changes it. It infuses life into it. It rises. In the same way, when the life of the kingdom of God, which is in the believer, interacts with humanity, that believer uh, touches the people around them with the kingdom of God. And there is a change. The life in the believer comes from the Holy Spirit. When we as a church, filled with the Holy Spirit, are mixed in with the world, we spread good effect like yeast throughout the whole batch of dough. It might start out small, but it grows into a great thing in the end. Just as we believe, as believers are likened to being light in the darkness to dispel darkness and as salt to add flavor and a preserving influence in the world, so we are like yeast in that the kingdom of God within us brings life into the world, and with that life comes change. And if you're a baker and you want perfect leavened bread, the yeast must be mixed fully into the batch of dough to bring life to it and cause it to rise. The same may be said of the kingdom of God. Some pretty good thoughts here. I wonder if we take this with us and realize that what's in us, the life of God, has an effect out there in the world that we walk in. And people see us and they see God in us and that can change them. The Spirit of God can use your words, your actions to affect change and to bring life into deadness and cause everything to come together for the glory of God where people that are lost are saved. And that's what the gospel message is all about. Salvation for everyone who believes. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. This is Food for Thought.